Hello and welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com, slash WrestleGamer and ZFX TV. I'm the Russell Gamer, don't be only blue show. I got a few people to introduce you to first. He's the host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, which can be heard exclusively over on YouTube.com, slash HWR Show. He is the Illuminous One, the Shining Star, Rick Star. Rick, how are you shining? I'm shining pretty good, and I got a new hashtag. Hashtag impact is shit. Well, we'll find out exactly what he means uh, on the review this week as we uh, say hello to our resident music mogul over on YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV. He is the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. And his 49er empire will be going down tomorrow in the playoffs. It's eBay. Area. And BB. No one is Will. Will, what's up? Uh, we, we play tomorrow, thank you. We play Sunday, thank you. And just like Rick said, I want my two hours back. I want it back now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't figured it out by now, we're talking about Impact Wrestling for the week of January 9th. 2014, opening up Impact with the contract signing for the match between AJ Styles and Magnus. And of course, they had, kind of Dixie had to be out there to kind of escalate everything, and uh, she evolved it into a no DQ. I, I was truly under the assumption that they would have this, you know, this big of a match instead of one week before Genesis. Why not at the Genesis event? To me, having it one week before the big Genesis event is just kind of silly, in my opinion. I don't know why Dixie Carter and the Carter family thought, like, hey, let's have the event one week before uh, a big event like Genesis. To me, honestly, AJ, you know, not knowing what happened on Impact, you know, you know, all of, all of that besides the point. You know, you would have AJ Styles and Magnus as your selling point for Genesis. That would have really sold me to watch it, not the week before. So I don't understand the the the, the movement to have or the reasons why to have the match one week before the big Genesis show. But anyway, that's how they ended up. And uh, they ended up. You know, to me, honestly. Dixie Carter is more over the top uh, as a heel than Michael Cole was two years ago on commentary. Um, three out of five on that one, and that's just being kind. Because, uh, you know, because AJ Styles, he was okay. Magnus was okay. Dixie Carter, you know, when, when you're angry, you're supposed to express it on your face, not just have a blank stare. But um, anyway, uh, opening match... Uh, this week was Eric Young and Joseph Park taking on the Bromance with DJ Zima Ion, and at one point, Dixie Carter is kind of firing up all the heels, if you know what I mean. You know, at one point in the match, she's, they show her backstage talking to ODB, and no, not ODB, and they're talking to Lady Tapa and Gail Kim, and next thing you know, they take out ODB in the backstage. Eric Young runs down to, uh, to go see about her, and that, that leaves Joseph Park, who ends up, uh, from what they, if I've got this right, I think they call it the bro down on Joseph Park to get the win. And then they take part of the guardrail and they put it in the ring and once again hit the bro down on Park. To, to me, Rick, you know, just in this opening matchup, you, you, you kind of had the feeling of uh, how the, uh, the night was going to go. Yeah, um, it, it went down like shit. Um, you already knew that this whole night was just going to be nothing but a thugging, and that's pretty much the way it was. I, I just nothing but a thugging. It's just... I, I wish I could just comment more, but to comment more on this show, it's just a waste of time, and just to put any more effort in it is just a, a waste of my time. It's just total crap. I'm going to go 2.5 out of 5. Um, on this match, you know, based on the I'm sorry, that, Billy. I, I gotta knock you down. It, it, it's 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 point five. This whole show sucks. I'm sorry, Billy. Well, uh, backstage, Samoa Joe was warning Dixie uh, not to mess with AJ Styles, and, and she, she ends up in that segment putting him in a match against EC3. It was kind of almost inevitable what was going to happen. Well, it, well, you know, it was one direction they could have went, but they went in another 
uh, direction, but we'll get to that when it happens. Uh, back to the in-ring segment, James Storm calls out Gunner, and they basically, in this segment, they agree to one more match. You know, James Storm saying, you know, string up that big case once again, and I bet you you can't do it again to me. Well, the way this kind of sounds, it kind of sounds very, very familiar, doesn't it? Uh, another show, 2008. I remember it, but it's not the other sh other company. And yes, this has not a lot of shades of gray. This is just one more chance to see who is really deserving of that Beast of Far World Title match in a briefcase. Yada yada yada. And you know what? IWC is probably thinking right now, who's the real heel here? Is it Storm or is it Gunner? Um, it's not a shock. What's going on here, folks? I mean, good tag team that was broken off, I think, too quickly. And, you know, I don't know. I think this could have went forward, but I think Storm's the heel here. So let's just try to be honest about this. I'll, gi I'll give it a 2.5. I really wasn't amazed by it, but, I mean... It, it could have been better, but 2.5. An EC3 starts uh, uh, jump some mojo in the backstage. They go to commercial break, and then they come back to find a spell to the outside, and they go all the way into the ring. And th that's pretty much how the matchup starts. But, you know, during the match, samojo has got the muscle buster set up, He's, and Rockstar Spud, again, kind of predictable that we're going to do a run-in, um, grabs the foot of Joe, preventing him from doing the muscle buster, and when Joe goes to confront him on the outside, EC3 grabs a wrench and hits Samoa Joe right in the knee with it. Now, Lance, they ruled it a no contest, but technically, in my eyes, that should have been a disqualification on EC3. Yes, it should have, because as we know, you get somebody hit, gets hit with a Little eagle object, automatic disqualification. I have no idea where the hell they're going with this. Um, Honestly, I, this is probably where I think they're, go they're going with this whole BS angle. Lockdown. A long build. Yeah, it, it definitely would be a long build for that one. Three out of five on that one, and that's just being kind. As... Um, we turn to backstage. Sting finds both Storm and Gunner unconscious. And then he's then he confronts Dixie Carter about it, and then basically uh, Dixie Carter puts him in a in a match himself. And Sting uh, was left saying, "You know what? I've had enough of this." So <sighs> again, Dixie, when you're angry, you're supposed to facially express it. You know, maybe she had too many Botox injections in her face. I don't know. Uh, maybe she's had more facelifts than. Uh, Joan Rivers, you never know. Um, Kurt Angle had a steel cage open challenge. And, and I was kind of racking my brain, Rick, on on who would really step up to the plate. Now, when Bobby Roode first made his appearance in there, were you kind of getting the inclination that maybe TNA was going to do something right for once and, and possibly have Bobby Roode one week before Genesis with a big steel cage match he's already supposed to have? With Kurt Angle going no, the not at all. You knew that they were gonna. You knew he was setting somebody else up. That's that's how wrestling goes. That's how the wrestling world goes. So I was waiting for them to bring them out. I'm like, okay, yep. Yeah. And it was no shock. They comes out and you know well, they, they double the dip, so to speak. Yeah, them being the bad influence to go. You know, I haven't had chance to Yes. So he brings out double. Yeah. And you know the fact that. It was a good match, and the angle was even beating the hell out of him. Of course, it, it still didn't matter. You know, you still have uh, Spud and EC3 coming out, and what happens? You still see the whole lineup of what's coming out for the main event, and it's just no, you're no, shaking Spud, your head, no, and you're Spud shaking your head, and it's like Spud and EC3 didn't come out for this match. They came out for the, for the following match. Oh, but, it was, I'm sorry, my mistake. Yeah, it's my mistake. I apologize. Yeah, True. Yeah, yep. Angle had uh, Angle slammed Kazarian. And uh, and uh, Daniels was already taken out uh, thanks to Kurt Angle. And, uh, and, uh, this was a one clear win. Yes, I'm sorry. Just 
Yeah. Yeah. This was one clean, one one legitimate win of the match. So I guess I'll give it, as you're, in your words, to be kind, a three out of five. Then, then so. following that, we find out that Dixie Carter has put Bobby Roode in a steel cage match against Sting. <laughs> no, this is where EC3 came out and uh, Rockstar Spud uh, had run in interference, basically. Yeah. You know, it, they, they announced him in commentary as Baton, and then fought the following promo backstage, Sting called it a pipe. I'm not exactly sure just what exactly the object was, but it was still, you know, basically uh, Bobby Roode being put over uh, like that, and I, I gotta say, ugh, I don't know, two out of five, you know, really can't talk too much about it, but this, the following segment really got my attention, Will, and that's Mr. Anderson meeting Bully Ray in a funeral home. I don't know how many times I'm going to shake my head when I looked at this. I mean, Bully Ray was in the back of the funeral home like he's plotting something. And I guess he's has a little theme of how he's going to end Mr. Anderson. And when I watched it, I really didn't have any words to say. I was shocked. I, I, I didn't know how to take it. I'll give it. I'll give it an even flow of a three here. I, I, it was overall statement was good. Put a shock to my face, but I want. I want them to fight at Genesis. I, I, I want to see how this fares out. But I'll give it a three. Main event time. Winner takes all. No disqualification match. Magnus versus AJ Styles, and to me, honestly, it was where TNA dropped the ball. I mean, it was just so blatantly predictable about the run-in interference from all the heels. I mean, every heel that was there that night was doing run-in interference for Dixie Carter. To me, Lance, that was just too much, in my opinion. Yeah, it's like over the top, and and two with having all these runs, you're gonna make your champion look like a paper champion. In wrestling, you never want to do that. Yeah, exactly. So, worst segment of the night. Oh yeah, and um, uh, the finish of it, it was uh, Bobby Roode with three Death Valley drivers. Hold on, hold on. let me say it slowly for Mike to name. So that way, when he, uh, if there by some chance he, uh, watches this, he understands what that move is. It's not powering him down. It's a Death Valley driver invented by Louis Spicoli. Remember that, Mr. Tanay. Because I'm getting a little sick of commentators coming on TV being all these big wig high shot. Uh, commentators and, and they're not knowing the names of, of basic moves like a Death Valley driver. Oh, he powered him down. Bull crap. Um, anyway, time for overall scores and picks for best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling. And for me, it's going to go, I'm going to give it three out of five, you know, straight down the middle. Um, I, I got to say, this overall, the opening segment was okay, but again, too much running interference on the main event, which takes it to be one of the worst matches of the night. Best match of the night, uh, to, to me, is the Steel Cage Challenge match, Kurt Angle versus Bad Influence. That was a really, really well-worked match. You got three guys in there who really know what they're doing in the form of Kurt Angle, Daniels, and Kazarian, and they, to me, in my opinion, they're the ones who stole the show that night, not... AJ Styles and Magnus, and uh, how how often do you hear you say something bad about an AJ Styles match? Not very often, if at all. So, but you know, it was just you know, it's not Magnus' fault. It's not AJ Styles' fault. It's too much run-in interference. It made it so blatantly obvious what they were going to do. You know, they could have worked it better. You know, they could have had a, a better matchup. They could have done so much better. For this, they, they, they could even, uh, you know, if they would have had this, I'll, I'll tell you, at Genesis, I, I definitely would have boycotted TNA right then and there. But, you know, the week before Genesis, uh, I don't know. To me, like I said, this is just 
I, you know, we're all sitting here wondering, you know, just wonder what was Dixie Carter doing, you know, in, in TNA. And why is she trying to run down her own company? I don't know. Well, let's go to the let's go to Rick next. Rick, what's your overall score in your picks for best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling? Well, my overall score certainly is not three. That's I, I can't even call that kind. I call that more of a blessing. I'm sorry. Uh, I wouldn't even. I'm sorry. It's just that simple. Um, I, I, I won't even give this thing a, a 1.5. I, I have to give it a 0. 0.5. This show was utterly garbage from start to finish. Period. I'm sorry. It was a, it was a disgrace to wrestling. It was a waste of my fucking time. It did nothing for the wrestling industry. It did nothing for TNA, and all it did was run down the industry's name. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the worst segment. Yeah, main event. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, best segment, if there was one, I'll just say the the better segment of the night. Yeah, I'll give the Kurt Angle uh, challenge match. It was a good match for what it was, but that's all it had. that's all there was to it. Other than that, the rest of the show was fucking garbage. I have nothing nice to say about the show. The rest of it, junk. Absolute junk. Um, next up is Lance. Lance, what's your overall score in your picks are best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling? I'm going to give it a two. Best because it had a couple of good points. The rest was shite, as Shannon would say. Uh, best match would be the... Uh, Angle cage match. Best segment. I have to the funeral home saying. Worst rest of the show. Yeah, the funeral home segment, I will say this, you know, when the when I was doing the live coverage of it on the Facebook page, it really got a lot of praises from the fans of on the, on Facebook. They really thought it was a really well worked segment for uh TNA. So maybe TNA's doing something right here with Bully Ray and Mr. Anderson. You never know. You, you never know uh, when it comes to the, that regard. Um, and finally, we own segment. I will say this, you know, when the, when I was doing the live coverage of it on the Facebook page, it really got a lot of praises from the fans of, on the, on Facebook. They really thought it was a really well worked segment for uh, TNA. So maybe TNA's doing something right here with Bully Ray and Mr. Anderson. You know. And finally, let's go to Will and find out his overall score and his picks for best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling. And Rick, uh, I'm going to jump on your boat on this one, but I'm going to give it a little bit more of a one. And I'm going to explain why. Best seg The best match is the Kurt Angle Open Challenge. Best segment is basically Sting losing his mind because he knows that Dixie Carter is running that company straight to the trash can. Worst segment is basically, you know, Dixie Carter, you know, putting out all these hits on AJ's friends, and the worst match is, I have to say, is the main event. Like Rick said, too much interference. I mean, Steve was only there to watch his back. What was like a 7, 8 on 2, gentlemen? I mean, come on now. I mean, other company, yeah, they had it bad, but this was beyond a clusterfuck. But I will give the Mr. Anderson Bully Ray segment its props, but the rest sucked. That's my one out of five. I gotta be nice. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, what we want to know now from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Impact Wrestling this week. Be sure you put your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Rick, where can man's check out, uh, check you out on HWR? <laughs> Of course, you can always check me out on my Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash hardcore wrestling video. And anytime you want to listen to the show, check us out on our YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash HWR show. All right, and Lance, what can fans expect to see when they come visit your channel over on youtube.com slash Lance Moss TV? Restaurant reviews, NASCAR reviews, album reviews, cooking videos, Q&As, and whatever else pops in my head. And when he's not going to watch his 49ers lose on Sunday in the playoffs, well, you got anything coming up? 
<laughs> Let me guess. The 49ers are playing against the Saints, but uh, is that the idea? Uh, I think I'm starting to get the idea. They're playing the Panthers. We got the Panthers. We got the oh. Panthers. Sunday, oh. 10 a.m. And Billy, be very lucky. I'm in an upset league. I picked the Saints to upset the Seahawks because uh, I want Saints Niners Conference Championship in San Francisco. Where we can blow you out again. <laughs> so be very happy. Hey, hey, you know what? Just be both of you guys lucky that I ain't playing the Pats. Didn't did, did we beat you guys on Alternative Mothers before? But I, yeah. I, I think we so beat you. So, other than that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> <laughs> also don't forget to like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGSTV, and don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash RussellGamer and youtube.com slash TV Network. So for the luminous one, the shining star, Rick Star, the Bay Area MVP known as well, and for the incomparable Lance Moss of Lance Moss TV, I'm the Russell Gamer, Double Bean from the saying thank you very much for watching. This week's Impact Review has been brought to you by the brand new product from James from the Big Easy's new Animas for Dixie Carter. And coming up next week will be Billy's Share Shots World Tour. No!